sanctuary. Uh, we've got um, Sister Charisma and Brother Joe here from an Australian news agency. And um, uh, Charisma read something uh, that I had the nerve to say in the New York Times. And so she found her way here. <laughs> she found her way here. So we're grateful to have them with us. They'll be with us in both this service and the next service. And they're uh, putting together something for the Australian radio um, station. Or I, I'm not, is that what it is? I can't remember now. TV station. Sorry about that. Um, that will come out in February. And of course, February is a great month because it's. Uh, uh, February is just a great month. It's a great birth. birth. <laughs> so we thank you this morning. And again, I am always um, grateful to God for our being a church that recognizes our work is not just here in the walls. It is out in the street. It is in the community. That's our job. And that's been our job ever since we uh, formed as a church in 1944. Today, in your bulletin, you have a, two passages of Scripture, as always, one for this service, one for the next service. But needless to say, after the, um, the election results came in, um, we realized that it was not appropriate, not as God would have it, to act as if the election did not happen. So therefore, there are two different scriptures today uh, that are not in your bulletin because the bulletin was already printed by that time. I want to thank your brother and mine, Jeff Goodman, who's here today. We are grateful to God for him. It's always good to see him. I want to talk from Romans. You guys have it up there. From Romans chapter 1. Uh, verses 14 to 17. This is Paul's letter uh, to the church at Rome. And he says in the NIV, he says, I am obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks. I want you to pay attention to the action words here. He says, I am obligated both to the wise and to the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. I want to talk about divine obligation this morning. I want to talk about divine obligation this morning. Let us pray. Oh, God, we come thanking you for this day. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for walking with us in every way and for teaching us. Thank you for the experiences of life where you have given us an opportunity to learn. And we come today realizing that while we are a church, we still have an obligation to our work in the world that we would continue to increase the equity and brand of God in the minds of people around the world. And so therefore, I pray this morning that you, we know you're with us. We can feel you already. We know you're with us because we brought you in here with us. We know that you are with us because the power of God is everywhere. And we thank you that you show up all the time. We thank you that the power of your Holy Spirit is within us, and we thank you because you've given us an opportunity to share yet again. We pray your blessings over our time together, pray your blessings over your word, over the message and the messenger and the hearers, and may all that we do be to your glory. In your son Jesus' name we pray. And God's people said, God's people said, God's people said, amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise as you take your seat.
the Word of God. How many of you know the Word of God is the greatest power in the whole world? Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. How many of you realize that there is no greater power in the world than the power of God? I need to say that a different way, right? And I recognize that in the world, it is very easy to get tripped up by what happens in the world. Do I have a witness here? I'm going to preach this morning. Do I have a witness here? We can get very tripped up by what's going on in the world, can't we? All of us can. Isn't that right? But, but here's what we must understand. God has given us a gift. Uh, I, I want you to hear this. God has given us a gift, and that gift is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the gift of the Holy Spirit helps us get up every day and realize that no matter what comes our way, we are centered in Christ. Do I have a witness here? It doesn't matter how tough, doesn't matter, doesn't matter how easy. What we know is that every day I came to tell you, you may take your shoes off last night, but you don't take God off last night. Do I have a witness here? He ought to always be with us. The text tells us something because I recall that in 2016, there were plenty of people that were upset. Y'all might as well say amen because it's true anyhow. Amen? There were people that were upset. In the year 2000, there were people that were upset. In 2000, people were upset because the presidential uh, candidate won with less popular vote by 500,000 popular votes because in this country, the real winner is the one of the Electoral College. That year, uh, President Bush won the Electoral College, but he lost the popular vote by 500,000 votes. Amen. Y'all might as well get with me because I'm going to preach in a minute. In 2014, he won, I'm sorry, in 2004, he won the popular vote and the electoral vote. In 2008, there was, a, there was a young senator from, uh, from the state of Illinois, don't they, right? And he won the popular vote and he won the electoral vote in 2008 and in 2012, becoming our first African-American president. And then in 2016, uh, Mr. Trump lost the popular vote by 2.9 million votes but he won the Electoral College. And then yesterday, somebody, somebody doesn't hear me. Somebody doesn't hear me. And then yesterday, in the midst of this pandemic, people not able to get out and move the way they normally do, many people in the past who decided, just like in 2016, Part of the issue was 4.4 million black people did not vote in 2016 that had voted in 2012. Well, I haven't seen the statistics yet, but all I know is some folks got up out of their beds, some folks decided they were going to go to the polls, they were going to write in, they were going to mail in, they were going to stand in line for hours to make sure that their voice was heard. And I am here to tell you today that I don't care how anybody decides to say awful things about the election process and all that stuff. If it was good when it was good for you, it's good when it's not as well. And I come today as a child of God to say that while it's not my business to talk about or to tell you my preference when it comes to this whole thing, Here's what I am. I'm an American citizen, just like you are. And I've decided, I don't care what anybody says, it's important for us to be able to understand that whether our candidate wins or loses, we've still got to have a way of being and an attitude of how we ought to show up in the world. And if we showed up and didn't get all messed up and act foolish when another candidate that we may not have voted for won, we can do the same and expect the same of everybody else when the candidate that we may have liked won. Here's what I'm grateful for. Here's what I'm grateful for. The, the fact of the matter is, more than in any other election ever, more people voted than have ever voted in the history of our country. That is a big deal. That is a big deal. 
The Secretary of State has not certified our election here in Oregon, but the estimates are that 80% of eligible voters voted in the state of Oregon. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. And so I come to you today as a child of God who says that we must show up in a way that is not partisan, that we show up in a way that is about righteousness. Do I have a witness here today? That, that's really what it's all about. Paul, Paul said something in a different context, but it fits for where we are right now. Paul is talking to the church at Rome. And by the way, the background on this book is that Paul is literally litigating the case for Jesus Christ. Now, I, I need to stop for a minute and just tell you that Paul wasn't always on his side. Paul didn't always believe, but Paul had an epiphany uh, while he was on the way to Damascus, and somebody stopped him and let him know that he was real. And he said, why are you persecuting my people? Why are you persecuting my church? And he gave him three days to get it together, and then he sent Ananias down there to go to Paul on Straight Street in Acts chapter 9. My reason for telling you that is that Paul got it together. Once he had a relationship with Christ, he never went back to try to tear down the church. He never went back to try to talk ill of Jesus. And I came to tell you that even in 2020, we may have suffered a whole lot, but I came to tell you that I hope that there are some people that are willing to stand up for Christ and say that before Christ came in my life, I may still make some mistakes, but before Christ came in my life, I was just pitiful. But I tell you, once Christ came in my life, everything changed. Do I have a witness here? Paul said... Paul says right out of the gate in chapter 1, Paul says, I'm obligated. Y'all don't hear me. Paul, Paul says that whether I like it or not, whether I want to or not, I have given and sold out to who Christ is. And if I've given and sold out who Christ is, then somebody ought to be able to see some Christ in me. I'm going to preach in just a minute, y'all. Paul says, I'm obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks. He said, both to the wise and to the fool. In other words, he said, I'm obligated to everybody because when I open my mouth, I need to recognize there's some believers, there's some non-believers. There's some that are mature, there's some that are not mature. But my message should not change as a result of who decides to show up because my message is the same. I am obligated. He said, that's why I am eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. Paul said, because I'm not ashamed. I'm telling you, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Can I park here for just a minute? I need somebody to know that when Paul begins to adjudicate the case for Jesus, he's like Perry Mason and is dealing with Ham Hamilton Burger. Y'all don't know anything about that. I still watch the reruns. Amen? Paul said, I'm, I'm Perry Mason, and I'm going to adjudicate this case on behalf of who Jesus is. He said, not only am I obligated to preach and teach, he said that I'm eager. In other words, I can't wait to get out there and tell somebody who Jesus is. I can't wait to stand up and say, I'm a child of the king. I can't wait to let somebody know that in the depths of their hurt and pain, there is somebody that's looking out for them, somebody who will walk with them, somebody who will talk with them, somebody they can depend on. Paul said, I'm eager. I am eager to preach the gospel. Paul said to the people, I want you to know that I can't wait. I want to get out there, and I want to let you know about this Jesus that I found out about. I came to tell you, do y'all mind for a minute? I, I'm going to unpark myself for just a minute because I need to say something to those that may be hurting like others did in 2016. That's exactly why it is important that your hope 
should always be in the Lord because when your hope is in the Lord, you can praise him in season. You can praise him out of season that you will not get messed up because you know that he's the same to yesterday, today, and forever. That's just about who God is. And I like the fact that I can preach and teach when the weather's good and when it's not. The Bible tells us, Paul said, in case you're wondering why it is that I'm so eager, in case you're wondering why it is that I said I'm obligated, in case you're wondering why it is that when bad things happen, I'm going to keep on rolling anyway. Paul said, I was upset in 2016, but I kept on rolling anyway. I was upset in 2012, but I kept on rolling anyway. I was upset in 2008, but I kept on rolling anyway. I was messed up in 2004, but I kept on rolling anyway. I was upset in 2000, but I kept on going anyway. And in 2020, I may or may not like what happened, but I I'm going to roll on anyway, and I'm going to roll on uh, because the God that I serve uh, in 2020 is the same one I served uh, in 2000, in 2004, in 2008, in 2012, in 2016, and I'm so glad uh, that I've got a God uh, that is the same. Uh, he'll walk with me. Uh, and talk with me, uh, and he'll tell me that I am uh, his own. Uh, the text tells us uh, that Paul said I'm obligated, but Paul said I'm eager. But I need to tell you one more thing Paul said. Paul said I'm not ashamed uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I come to tell you, Paul said, uh, I am not ashamed. Uh, I need somebody to understand uh, that I mean, Paul said, uh, whether you like it or not, uh, whether it's cute or not, whether it conforms or not, I came to tell you, I'm a child of God. I believe in who he is, uh, and I know that he died for me on the cross one day and became sin for me. The word tells me uh, that he got up on the third day, and when he got up, he got up with all power in his hands. Somebody said uh, that they went and stole his body. Somebody said uh, he never was, uh, well, he was Mary's baby. He wasn't the son of God. Uh, I came to tell you, I believe he was Mary's baby. I believe he was the son of God. I believe that he's my savior. I believe that he got up on the third day morning. I believe that he hung around for 50 days. I believe that he came through a window or a door with the disciples and no glass was shattered. I believe that he left us and stands by and takes care of advocating for you and me at the right hand of the Father. I believe that he does it every day. I believe that he sent the Holy Spirit to stay with me, to hang with me, to hang with you, and to let us know that we are not by ourselves. I can say that I'm not ashamed because I've been down before. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I've been scandalized before. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And all I can tell you is every time I got down, he was busy lifting me up. Every time I felt like giving up, uh, he lifted me up. Do I have a witness here this morning? I am not ashamed uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I am not ashamed uh, to tell somebody that it's going to be all right. Uh, I'm not ashamed uh, to pray for the president, no matter who the president is. I am not ashamed uh, to pray for the mayor, no matter who the mayor is. I'm not ashamed uh, to pray for the governor, no matter who the governor is. I'm not ashamed of the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed. Paul said that if I take on the relationship with Jesus Christ, 
that there's some things that I ought be able to do. I'm obligated. What does that mean? That means that there's so much of Jesus in me, not because I'm so great, but because he is so powerful. Do I have a witness here? That even when I want to do wrong, he'll make me do right. Uh, that even when I mess up, that he causes me to want to go to him uh, and ask for repentance uh, for what I messed up in. Do I have a witness here this morning? When I haven't been as loving as I could be, he's got the Holy Spirit inside me reminding me how I'm supposed to act. When I don't forgive the way I need to forgive, he's got the grace of God, the power of the Holy Spirit in me to get my act together and recognize that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm obligated. What does that mean? That means uh, that I don't have a choice uh, about being two-faced. I don't have a choice uh, about being a gossiper. What does that mean, preacher? I can't be two-faced because I'm obligated to do the work of God uh, and whatever I have to say to you, uh, I need to say to your face uh, and not behind your back. Uh, secondly, uh, I don't have a right uh, to gossip about you. Uh, I know what I have to do, uh, and I'm going to do it. Paul said, uh, I'm obligated. Paul said, uh, I'm eager. What does that mean, preacher? I'm so glad you ask uh, that nobody has to tell me uh, that you need to go out there and apologize to God. Apologize to your brother and sister. I'm eager to get it right because when I get it wrong, I feel like I'm not as close to God as I used to be. And I don't know about you, but every relationship you have that needs some nurturing and I came to tell you that it's mighty good uh, to nurture that relationship with Jesus Christ so that he knows who you are and it's clear whose you are. He said, I want you to know that I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the word. Do I have any witnesses here this morning? I don't mind preaching and teaching. I don't mind walking. I don't mind telling somebody how good God is. Do I have a witness? Somebody doesn't mind telling somebody how good God is. Uh, oh, I came to tell you that all around this church, everybody's got a story. But I know one thing's for sure. If you are a child of God, that story uh, tells us uh, that one time uh, you were down and thought you were forgotten. Uh, but the good news about God uh, is he will not leave you down there. And while you're there, he sends his buddies called mercy and grace to come hang out with you while you're down there. He sends to you, he sends to me uh, the hope uh, that he gave and said that it's all right. The Bible said that Paul said, here's another reason why I'm not ashamed. I came to tell you, I know that we've got a defense system and we've got all kinds of guns and AK-47s and all that kind of stuff. He said, but I need you to know that part of the reason why I'm not ashamed is not because of what I carry in my back pocket, not what I carry in my coat pocket, not what I carry underneath my pillow. Paul said, I don't care about the nine millimeter because I know somebody who's got more power than any of these things at all. And the Bible said that he's got all power. God has all power. He has all power. He has all power to bring salvation to everyone. What does that mean, preacher? And I'm going to round third and head for home when he says something about the fact that I can bring his power, can bring salvation. It means that the worst scoundrel around, 
the one who talks the least about God. Paul said, I used to be one of them, but one day I had a relationship with God. And when that happened and he imparted the Holy Spirit in me, I didn't want to leave him. I didn't want to leave his presence. I don't want to go anywhere else. There's something great about knowing that you're a child of God. There's something great about knowing that no matter how much I've got going on down here, that one of these days I'm going up there to be with him forever. That's why Dr. King said that if you want to recognize where it is you're going, he said it's important that we learn how to be brothers and sisters right down here despite our color, despite our background, despite our economic and social station in life. He reminded us uh, that it's important for us to remember that if we can't live together as brothers and sisters, we shall perish together as fools. Uh, Paul is saying, I've got to tell this uh, to those that want to hear, and I've got to tell it to those that don't want to hear. I've got to tell it uh, to those that are literate, uh, and I've got to tell it to those uh, that are illiterate. Well, preacher, how's Paul going to reason with the illiterate? Uh, I'm so glad you asked the question, because you see, God can do what Babel can't do. God can do what any other translation of, of software they have out there. What does that mean, preacher? Let me walk with you to my apartment. My apartment says Acts chapter 2. The Bible tells me that in my apartment, in Acts chapter 2, I saw something that had never been seen before, and that is uh, that he sent the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells me that it showed up like fire. It showed up like wind. It showed up and people of every tongue, every tongue were confessing. People of every tongue were praising. And the good news is they understood each other. I come to you to tell you that if one is illiterate, God will make it plain for him. Do I have a witness here? We're in a one-room classroom this morning. Some are mature. Some may be biblically illiterate. But I came by to tell you, God will make it plain. Do I have a witness? God will make it plain. You may not get it today. You may not get it going up Martin Luther King. But I know one thing's for sure. He will make it plain to every one of us. And if you don't understand, just call out his name. Do I have a witness here? Call out his name. He will. He will. He will make it plain. The gospel. I'm so glad that I'm a child of the king. I'm so glad that I'm obligated. I'm so glad that I'm not ashamed. I want to say this last thing, and then I'm going to round third and head for home. Paul says it is a righteousness revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. He says the righteous will live by faith. Somebody doesn't understand what I mean. I'm going to tell you, here's the good news about the God we serve. There are times when I understand what he's doing. Then there are times I don't understand. Is there anybody here that can say there are times I don't understand? But the old folks used to have a song that said you'll understand it better. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. They said you'll understand it better by and by. How many of you know that God has a plan for your life? God has a plan, and every day he's working out that plan in us. Let me tell you that there are times uh, that we sit in reflection and ask ourselves, uh, why did I forgive that scoundrel? Why did I not open up my mouth and cuss them out? I came to tell you that God uh, has a plan. Do I have a witness here? 
there's a reason why you didn't cuss them out uh, because you used to be that same way yourself. Uh, you used to be self-centered. You used to care only about yourself. And when you see it come back to you, it'll make you want to do something to defend yourself. Well, I'm so glad you're here this morning. I'm so glad you're listening in this morning because I need to tell you uh, that you've got somebody who will fight every battle. You've got somebody who's got bigger skills than you and I have. You've got somebody who cares so deeply for you. And the Bible tells me uh, that he's a lawyer who's never lost a case. Uh, he's a doctor. He's never lost a case. Uh, and I'm so glad. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that because that's who he is, uh, this is who I get to be. And I came to tell you that it's important for you to remember that you are a child of God. Uh, and if he's got power, <laughs> you've got power. Do you hear me this morning? If he's got power, you've got power. You can withstand uh, the battle that is raging uh, in your life. You can deal with the issues that come in your life. You can handle the mess that somebody tried to drop at your door, not because of who you are, but because of who God is. Uh, I'm obligated uh, to tell you uh, that he's all right. Uh, I'm obligated uh, to tell you that he will not leave you. Uh, he will not forsake you. Uh, I'm obligated uh, to tell you uh, that if you're down, uh, stay down for a minute, uh, but get yourself back up uh, and get back in the race uh, because he'll stay with you uh, while you're down. Uh, he'll lift you up. Do I have a witness here? And help you take uh, the next leg uh, of this race. Uh, I came to tell you uh, that a person who does not know God is a person that I feel sorry for. But I'm so glad that I know who he is. I'm so glad that he walks with me and talks with me and tells us that he, we are his own. Do I have a witness here this morning? Finally, uh, when you are obligated, uh, when you are eager, when you are not ashamed, uh, you can agree with the songwriter. I can only imagine this. I can only imagine. I can only imagine because there's something about being a child of God that lets us know uh, that the impossible is only a little difficult, <laughs> that my God is able to do anything but fail. My God is able to lift you up. My God is able to put you on solid ground. Our God is able. Give him a chance. Give him a chance. Give him a chance. Give him a chance. I can only imagine. Let us stand and give God a big hand of praise. Let's stand and give him a big hand of praise. I can only imagine 